Hey guys, welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So, um, pretty excited right now. Um, I'm announcing this year's project for uh, the Keith Fenner uh, Toolbox Giveaway. So, uh, Keith gives away a toolbox to an uh, apprentice or a uh, worthy person uh, starting out in the trades. And uh, this year, a bunch of the fellow YouTube uh, community is offered to make some handmade tools and send them in as, uh, as uh, contributions to the, uh, the toolbox giveaway. So uh, I volunteered and uh, I kicked around a bunch of ideas for projects and uh, finally settled on uh, what I wanted to do. Um, <clears throat> I've got some volunteers that have uh, kind of aligned themselves and, and are ready to step up and uh, do a little bit of work. And uh, what we're going to build is, we're actually going to build one of these little vices here. Not the base, just the vice. So this is a uh, 1965 uh, or so uh, Wilton Baby Bullet. And I'll bring you in a little closer to get a, look, get a close look at it. Um, I took this all apart, I measured everything, I modeled all the parts in SolidWorks, and uh, made drawings of all the parts, and uh, so that we can just... Uh, uh, blaze right through all the parts and then uh, put it all together. So just to be clear, this is a welding, fabrication, and machine project. So uh, those folks that uh, would like to follow along, um, the plans are available on my blog site. And uh, here's a little link right here. And uh, there's a link in the description as well, uh, which would be down here. <laughs> Take a look down here on the YouTube channel. It's right down there. and. Uh, so you can download the drawings and there's pictures and a verbal description of, uh, of Keith's toolbox giveaway. So uh, most of you guys are familiar with this and uh, so this year is pretty exciting is that we're going to make some handmade tools and actually send them in and uh, Keith will review them on camera and they'll go in the toolbox. Uh, so pretty cool. So what I want to do now is I'll bring you in a little closer. We'll look at this thing close up. Um, this is the, uh, the materials that I've gathered together to, to build this thing. It's a lot, of, a lot more materials that's in it. Uh, you know, some of these are their extra lengths and whatnot. So uh, I'll bring you in a little closer. We'll look at this. And then uh, we'll talk about some of the challenges uh, with this project. And uh, so there's a couple. It's kind of neat, though. Um, but uh, I think they're manageable and it's achievable. So uh, let's take a closer look. Okay, so we're uh, zoomed in a little bit closer, and this is the, uh, the little Wilton uh, baby bullet here, and it's on one of these, uh, these omnidirectional power arms uh, that Wilton sold with these, well, with some of them, actually. Um, so this has, uh, has two-inch jaws, you know, they're 50 millimeters wide, and it'll open up about uh, uh, two and a half inches, you know, 65 millimeters or so, something like that. Um, it's just a little sweetheart and uh, you know everybody this is just iconic shape that uh, you know that's the iconic machinist vice shape right so who the heck wouldn't want one of those right um, anyway they don't make this one anymore uh, the smallest one they make has three inch jaws uh, which is a pretty good size and um, um, you, you can't get these anymore well you can but you gotta pay a lot for them on, uh, on eBay, <laughs> which is where this one came from. So, uh, now this one's a 60, 1965 vintage. It's in actually really good shape. Uh, I was surprised when I got it. It even has the remnants of a, oops, of a little, uh, I got the screws out of the, uh, out of the jaws there. So, uh, cause I'm going to, I'm going to take this apart. Uh, I'll break it down to all the little pieces and we get to look at it. It's even got the remnant of a little sticker, a little price tag or an inspection sticker. I'm not sure which. So, uh, uh, and this one says uh, Chicago on it, and I guess there's some provenance or whatever, depending on if it says Schiller Park or Chicago or whatever. So I don't know. Um, so there it is. It's got uh, hardened serrated jaws, and um, so we're going to need a volunteer that's got a shaper. Uh, to help us with these jaws because we want to um, we'll shape these jaws you shape at an angle and you shape at the opposite angle and then you get a little diamond pattern on there so uh, we're gonna need to need somebody with a shaper out there um, what else well let's uh, 
Let's get down to it. Let's take this thing apart and then we can uh, discuss the individual pieces and, uh, and how it'll get all broken up. So. Okay, so we've got the little, uh, the little Wilton baby bullet uh, taken apart here. And, um, you know, once you kind of get it broken down like this, it uh, doesn't quite look so complicated. So uh, let's just go through some of the parts here and uh, just talk about some strategies uh, about uh, how, how we might attack some of these things. So, uh, and then I'll, I'll drag some of the, uh, the, the bits of material in as, uh, as I talk about these. This one's closest to me, so let's, uh, let's talk about the screw here first, right? Well, we got, yeah, is that an Acme or a square? Yeah, it's an, I think it's an Acme. No, actually, it's a square thread. Um, we're gonna go with an Acme on this one. And um, I got a little piece of, uh, of Acme threaded rod from uh, McMaster Car. Um, it's actually long enough to kind of go all the way here, but uh, we're going to do it a little differently here. Got some rod here that we'll uh, form this uh, handle area here, and then a slightly larger diameter. And then we're going to insert this in here. Now there's a reason I'm doing it this way, and uh, you, guys will, you guys will see in a second when we talk about the nut. Uh, which is this right here, okay? Um, so um, anyway, that's the you know part of the idea of the project here is that uh, guys with modest shops could actually take this project on and uh, and succeed with it. So uh, um, so we don't want to introduce any real heavy duty operations here that are uh, that are difficult. So uh, there's that. Okay, so here's a piece of rod for this little handle. So uh, we're going to uh, cold head or your hot head these uh, these little uh, end features. So we'll make a little tool that clamps around the shank here, and then uh, we can hammer the end while it's hot to uh, help form that end. And uh, that'll have to be done in place here too. So it'll be kind of fun. So that's just you know some cold roll rod, you know, real cheap stuff. Okay. Um, so there's that. Let's talk about the nut. So there's the screw. Now here's the nut. This is an uh, Acme coupling nut here. Okay, and okay. So I don't know about you guys, but an internal Acme that small, that long, uh, you really need a tap for that. Uh, you know, trying to single point that's going to be a real pain in the neck. Acme taps are pretty expensive, so this is an easy way around having to buy an Acme tap. Okay. Um, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll create a composite nut here, okay, uh, that's using this coupling nut, and then that will become uh, our nut for the vise, okay? So that's the kind of the story there. So, you know, I may change up the plan as we go through this as we get into it. If it's uh, not working right or it's not coming out well, then uh, we, can always, uh, we can always change it up. These are also really cheap. This is, uh, hmm. You know what? I can't remember the price, but uh, this is under ten dollars. This is under ten dollars. You know, this you, you can't buy an Acme tap for that. Let me tell you. So, um, okay. So there's those things there. Let's set those aside. Um, then we got this. This is this a retainer here. Um, this is what actually when you unscrew, when you open the vise, um, this is attached here at this end here and. This takes the thrust as you as you open the vise. Now, as you tighten the actually, uh, yeah, as you tighten the vise, this surface here uh, uh, bears against this uh, this little counterbore in here like that. Okay. So once again, you know, that's here's a simple part. It's an eighth of an inch thick. Okay. Um, so we either you know turn that out of some round like that. Okay and drill a hole and then part it off and then do a little bit of mill work on it or we could you know you could saw it out of a out of a piece of flat material if you wanted to so a couple ways to do that one those are the screws little round head phillips there you know most guys are going to have uh, fasteners in their inventory so uh, we're not going to talk about those too much so unless you want to be really authentic because that looks authentic <laughs> all right um so let's talk about this guy here. Let's see. Um, let me reframe it a little bit, and then uh, we'll talk about this. Uh, I call this the moving jaw assembly here, and we're going to make this out of three pieces here. So one, two, and then the key three. And there's the date. Oh, 1962 here. So uh, 
Um, all right, so let's uh, let's reframe this. Okay, so this one here. Um, so if you just kind of mentally remove this part here, the the actual jaw part here, this is just a simple turning here. So you know it's tubular basically uh, with some counterbore features. So you can turn that out of a piece of solid, and uh, this will be a little tricky shaping that, but not too bad. And uh, then we cut a little keyway in it and either uh, pin it or screw it to uh, uh, the moving part here. Now this upper bit here, um, if you think about that thing just being chopped off and then we make this separately, uh, then we're going to weld that on there and then we'll blend all those welds so that it, it looks like a single piece here. That's the, uh, that's the general idea with that piece, okay? And you can see the kind of see the details there. You know, nothing super radical, nothing super uh, super complicated. Um, you know, getting it to look right is probably the hardest part of the whole thing here. So, uh, okay, so there's that bit. Okay, here's the nut. Let's look at the nut. This is kind of weird. It's a cast nut, and it's got some little fins, and it sits in this piece here. And one of its little functions is it's it's allowed to kind of wiggle around a little bit okay it's not locked solid and um, so we'll be doing the same thing so that it just has a little bit of wiggle room and this makes the uh, the screw behave nicely in that uh, it can seek a center line um, as opposed to trying to constrain it to a, a particular center line so it's kind of a floating nut so to speak okay and then uh, there's some little some little groove pins that kind of pin all this mess together here uh, and, and hold this guy here. And once again, you know, this is the end cap here that goes here, you know, and it's, it's, a, it's mainly shape and then it supports the, the nut, okay? Not a complicated piece to make, okay? You know, it's a simple turning job and uh, with a little bit of millwork in there to give us some... Uh, give us some uh, anti-rotation features there, okay? All right, and there's a nut, uh, and we'll be using the, uh, the coupling nut for ours. Okay, all right, so we talked about that, we talked about that, talked about that, and let's talk about that, because that's actually one of the harder pieces, believe it or not, I think. Um, so this is just a little silly sh sheet metal cap, right? And uh, the automotive guys are screaming right now, freeze plug, freeze plug, freeze plug. Well, they're exactly right, okay? So, it happens to be the right diameter. This is one inch, okay? Now, these are some uh, cup style uh, freeze plugs here. And I took one, one of, you know, as part of the development for this, I took one of the brass ones and actually hammered more of a dome into it. Actually, I, I got a little bit aggressive there and domed it out even farther. So you can see inside, I kind of whap, 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 tapped it in there on top of a soft block and stretched it out a little bit so that uh, uh, that we had more curvature than the stock one. You know, honestly, uh, this one, uh, you know, this isn't super far off here. That, that's workable almost, okay? So uh, anyway, like I said, this was kind of one of the trickier things. Uh, to figure out how we were going to make and, uh, and how we were going to start with it. So, uh, uh, but I think we got a solution here. These are readily available at auto parts uh, stores, um, so you can get them at auto parts store. They're you know they're a buck or something like that. So okay, we got those. There's that. Now this is the main body here. Um, let's see how long is this one here? Four minutes. Okay, we're we're okay. We got a little more time here. Um, so this, you got a you got a base, you got a tube, and then you got an upper section here. Okay, so there's our base, there's our tube. Okay, and then uh, the upper jaw section will come out of that, and this will be built up out of uh, multiple pieces. And in fact, these little uh, um, these bolt areas here that are, are higher as part of the casting here, we're actually going to cut those out and uh, they'll be welded to this, uh, to this base here and we'll put a nice fillet weld in there and then we'll blend all that in so that it looks like a casting. 
You see, I mean, this almost looks like a weld here that's just been cleaned up, right? And um, um, same here, you know, all this is, you know, you can just imagine those pieces being added on uh, and then the welds just being, uh, you know, carefully filed and cleaned up and, uh, and, uh, and blended in so that it looks nice, right? And well, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to change the camera a little bit because uh, we're going to talk about this a little bit more because one of the other difficult features um, of, the, of the build is in, this, uh, uh, is in the interior of this here and it's that little keyway. So we're going to talk about that in just a sec. Okay, so we're talking about the uh, the body, what I call the body here. This is the main body here. There's the bottom, and it's got a little um, a little pinhole. I think that's what locates it on top of a of a swivel base. If you put it on a swivel base, and um, so there's the base. Okay, that's going to be our our little bolt bolting surfaces there. Now this was, this was something that was, uh, that was bugging me here a little bit too uh, when I was thinking about it. You know, how the heck are we going to do this keyway? Not everybody has a, a set of brooches and that's actually a really kind of a long keyway, right? So long keyways can be a little bit tricky. So, um, you know, I started thinking about it and uh, how we might do that. And then it kind of dawned on me. It's like, well, duh, it doesn't have to be um, it doesn't have to be a keyway per se. What we can do, uh, and we get the uh, let me get the two here. So, and you know, obviously this isn't uh, isn't turned to diameter yet. But who says you can't just cut all the way through it like that and cut us basically a slot? Okay, I'm not doing a very good job drawing it there. Cut a slot all the way through that. And it'll behave the same as a keyway. And you know, if it's welded down to this base, hey, it's a keyway, right? And um, um, so you don't need a brooch to cut it. You need an end mill instead. And you can make it as long as you want. Okay? You can make it as long as you want. So, and you don't need a fancy brooch or bushing or press or any of that stuff. You can just mill it. Um, now, you know. There, there's some fundamental issues there too. Is that when you weld it, it may close down a little bit, and uh, so there's some some things to surmount there. But uh, we got some ideas for that stuff too. So um, um, you know, you can cut a, for example, you can cut a slot that looks like this. Okay. And then plop, you know, this goes all the way through, plop it down, do your welding, okay, weld your base on, right, weld your base on. And then what we do is the last little bit here, we, we cut this off and expose the end of that slot, okay. This end can still be blind, and um, so it's welded on and welded to the base and secure before you cut away its support, so it has less of a chance to close up on you. And you know you can do a little hand fitting in there too, if you need to, and uh, to get the uh, uh, the sliding part to uh, to behave itself in there. You know this this fits pretty good, okay, but it's not you know it's not perfect either, right? So uh, come on, yeah. So it's actually a pretty nice little fit there. Okay. Anyway, so that's one of the ways uh, that we may use to uh, to get around that thing there. And then once again, you know, it's a bunch of welding and uh, and blending. You know, there's going to be a lot of grinding and filing and uh, and whatnot uh, to get to these uh, to get to these parts. I'm excited. This is a pretty exciting little project for me, and uh, I think you guys are going to get a kick out of it as we build it on camera. So uh, I'm looking forward to showing you all and. Um, um, you know, those guys that, uh, that offered to, uh, to volunteer, uh, you know who you are, just kind of get in contact with me and if there's a particular piece that you want to, uh, you want to take on, then we'll, uh, we'll put you down for that. Um, and, uh, I'm going to build all the pieces on camera, so we may end up putting two of these together depending on how the volunteer thing goes. Um, and, uh, so we'll see, uh, we'll see how that all kind of develops. 
So coordinating a bunch of volunteers is uh, tricky. And um, uh, not that I don't want to help, it's just uh, um, we want to document this whole process so somebody can watch episode one and go to episode six or whatever and see the whole thing. So, uh, okay. So let's talk some more maybe. Okay, so that's probably about it for yapping about this thing. Uh, I'm just going to jump right in and start uh, making bits and pieces here. Um, and uh, those folks that uh, want to volunteer some help, uh, you can go, um, excuse me, you can go on the uh, Oxtool blog site and download the plans, pick out something you like and, uh, and um, get cracking. So uh, here's the link again and um, there's what it looks like and then here's a link in the description over here um, you know on the YouTube channel you can get it there so if you have any trouble downloading the uh, uh, the PDFs uh, or the parts list uh, or the materials list for McMaster car let me know and uh, I'll try to fix it and uh, I think it works fine so uh, but check it out and let me know so uh, looking forward to getting started on this and um, uh, just got a message from the man himself, Keith Finner, and he's uh, stoked about the project. So, uh, so am I. So, uh, let's get cracking and get her done, right? <laughs> All right.